when I got wind that there were apparently well, there was someone who actually grafted, you know what I mean, for his constituents and didn't stood his ground and didn't really appear to be a career politician. I thought, can't we give someone like that a go for once? Uh, from what I could tell, I was watching it from a distance in the end because I moved abroad, but um, it seemed like he took like a lot of savage, hackery, pig sticking from the media. I don't think he got a fair, a fair crack, to be honest. Pete Doherty, how are you? Welcome to Times Radio. Thank you very much. So, Pete, we're putting you in charge of the world. What would be the first big change you'd want to make? All right. Um, what did you say about war? Walls, climate change, they're sorted. So you can how, go for something that annoys that, you. How did that get sorted? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Some um, Somebody somebody had a magic wand or something. Uh, we're just saying that we assume that you'd want walls and climate change sorted. So what would be your th- your next thing on your list? Uh, I don't know. My gut reaction is to say something about rent caps, but it would have to be more than that. Things that are essential, energy access to information, education, gas, water, you shouldn't be allowed to sell. Everyone should access them. You know what I mean? If you want to make a fortune selling cars or luxury candles, you know what I mean? Tickety-boo, be, tickety be, tickety be, go for it. But, um, yeah, things that we need to survive, I think, should be communally owned. Nationalise everything, I think. That's what I do. National, and so are they free or are they just charged at the, the rate of... You have to hammer that. Cost? We're going to have to hammer that out at a later, later date. There's a lot of detail Fine. in there to go through. But <laughs> so what we got there, so, so it's what, energy, broadband, electric, gas, food? I think the things that when we were like, when we when the planet was a lot less populated and we would have access to water, shelter, and let's say with, with a little bit of progress, civilization, you know, education and access to education. Um, yeah, land, I think. I think there should be no private ownership of property until everyone is housed. Basic basic stuff like that, no? Makes sense, doesn't it? Lovely, well, lovely. It depends, if, if you've got a nice big a nice patch of land, I suppose you'd be all right. But if you ain't got Napo, then um, share it out a bit, no? Uh, rent caps. Yeah, sorry. Um, what's the thing about no, rent? that's good. No, why? No. Yeah. No, this is good. This is good. So what sort of leader do you think you'd be, uh, Pete Doherty? Because you've been, you know, you've been a front man. Are you a, are you a dictator? Are you the boss who's in charge? Are you a, a team player, a delegator, hands on, hands off? How do you, how are you? I think there's something to be said for benign dictatorship. But I, don't, I, wouldn't I know, but everyone says that when what they mean is dictatorship. <laughs> Martin, Martin Bryce says it in Never Decrease in Circles. Is there, uh, <laughs> you know, I think there's something to say for benign dictatorship. He goes, no. What's the name of his neighbour? He used to wear the jumpers, you know. Uh, he goes, what's your, what's, your, what's your preferred mode of government? And he goes, well, democracy, of course. He goes, you don't think there's something to be said for benign dictatorship? I think he's trying to control the cricket team or something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Fine. OK, you'll be a benign dictator. Who is in your team? around you who you would have you know you're maybe you're delegating to you're bossing them about they could be dead or alive real or fictional you can have anyone in your your cabinet or your team of advisors team of advisors spaffs yeah. uh okay uh ooh. i think bernie sanders he seems okay to uh hunter thompson Real or fiction? Sherlock Holmes, right? He always, he always seemed to. Uh... That'd be good. He'd sort everything out. Yeah. Um, Will Self. <laughs> no, it's okay. Tony, <laughs> Tony Ben. Uh, uh, Tony Hancock. Oh God, would be here all day. All the Tonys. Tony Ben. Tony Hancock. Tony Blair. Uh, I didn't catch that. Sorry. Did you sneeze? I don't know. <laughs> Tony Blair. Yeah. No. No. I yeah, do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I can't. You're breaking up. <laughs> <laughs> okay fine so pete now um normally but normally when i ask this normally when i ask this question we don't know about the guest has got any vices so the question is uh because all political careers end in failure what's your vice pete doherty which means you'd have to resign yeah no my advice would be um who am i giving the advice to no, vice. What's your vice? What's the thing we'd find out about you when you're in office Ooh. and then you'd have to resign? Sometimes I, well, they would force me to resign. Um, 
Uh, you're trying to leave me. You're trying to like get me to admit to wanking into the curtains, aren't you? I think I just, <laughs> sometimes I just sit. I just sit mindlessly staring at the news cycle. Um, yeah, I don't. I, I'm not proud of that. Uh, since I get into this little rut, and I, you know what I mean. The dogs. So do, you are, follow, do you follow the news? Because like sometimes, you know, if I interview people in the public eye for other reasons, and like, I don't follow it, or whatever. Do you follow? Do you follow what's going on in the world? Yeah, absolutely. I tend to try and like, um, like I said, I'm a bit of a sucker for the news cycle. But I like to try and see everything all at once, so it's just flashing through. It's a bit, it's a bit of a, uh, it is advice actually, but it's you know, Al Jazeera, CNN, and depending on what country you're in, if you can get access to to Russia today, and I like tuning into local stations on my digital radio, so getting into Kiev, getting into Beijing, Mexico, and picking up on all these mad little stories and all these varying, contrasting versions of the same events, and trying to work out what the truth is and Who's to be trusted and who is not to be trusted? Um, what do you what do you make of what's happening in British politics now? Then are you following that closely? Ah, oh, yeah, mate. it's like it's like watching like, a local derby at the Sunday League. It's going to be a, a good year to sit back and watch the news cycle. It's like a hell of a year. Very important. Um, I mean, you do obviously. I mean, it's your it's your media, no? The media, yeah. And, yeah. So you do it because you love it, no? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I think I, I'm not a physical animal, you know. Yeah, but I'm not um, like cheerleading for any one side. I think it's important. I want people to be like engaged in it, but then make up their own minds. Do you get like politicians? You know, you've had a uh, long career now. Do you, if you had politicians saying, "Oh, do you want to endorse us? Do you want to come and play for us?" You know, try to try to look cool because we've got the libertines in. Lock him up. I think was was, was one thing I heard. Um... Yeah, we did our bit. We did our bit. We tried to do our bit. Like um, I think we had Jeremy Corbyn. Uh, uh, we played at one of his rallies, I think. Um, yeah. And I think the first ever Baby Shambles gig was at, actually at the French Communist Party's youth rally. Um, wow! But this is purely coincidental. It doesn't say anything about my my leanings, of course. You know what I mean? <laughs> of course. But, but uh, no, there seemed to be a bit of momentum. At that time, you know, like it was 2018, it really seemed like he was gonna, like he was gonna carry through. The thing was, what what I picked up on was the people I knew that lived in his constituency. You know what I mean? Just on a day to day basic level, people having trouble with their, I don't know, with their neighbours finding a flat, issues through potholes. Apparently, he was someone who, who you could sit down with over a desk, discuss your problem with, and get things done. Like what do they used to call it? Public servant. And yeah. so so when I got wind that there were apparently well, there was someone who actually grafted, you know what I mean, for his constituents and didn't stood his ground and didn't really appear to be a career politician, I thought, can't we give someone like that a go for once? Uh, from what I could tell, I was watching it from a distance in the end because I moved abroad, but um, it seemed like he took like, a lot of savage, hackery, pig sticking from the media. I don't think he got a fair a fair crack, to be honest. Yeah. Well, I think sometimes with these things, it's like a, it's like there's a different skill set. You could be quite a good local MP, but like how you operate nationally is like a di- that's a different. You know, it's a bit, a bit like being maybe you can noodle away at a piano in the corner of a restaurant, but you can't sell out the O2. And I think he came under scrutiny. He wasn't always very good at explaining some of the things that he'd, you know, he'd, he'd as done before. To, that's why. As opposed to what Boris Johnson, Liz Truss. Coming under scrutiny and being flawless. <laughs> it's a very good point. It's a very good point. All, all those people who said uh, Jeremy Corbyn would be a disaster, would you like a lovely plate of Liz Truss at our restaurant? That's a, yeah, that went slightly maybe, less well. Maybe, uh, maybe Jeremy and Liz could get together and go form a new brave <laughs> party, take us all into a, a better place. You know? It does feel, it does feel like you know if you go far enough around the left and the right, you probably meet around the back. They could meet around the bike sheds of politics and sort things out. Um, now, Pete, because you mentioned about people lo- saying lock you up and all that. The thing that's really struck me, and I really enjoyed your like Louis Theroux interview and and all that. You've be- you've you you've, you've suddenly become like national treasure. Oh, do you, fe- do you yeah. feel like you've well, like national? If not treasure, then I don't know, knickknack, national knickknack, and you're on your way to treasure. Do you feel like that's happened? If people sort of uh, everything that people got cross with you about for, they now find terribly endearing. Uh... I don't know. It's, it's hard to have to measure these things sometimes. Like when I find myself in London, it used to be you would have people like stopping, rolling down the window, 
and giving you a wanker sign, whereas now you sort of get a thumbs up or a, a friendly smile. So maybe there is some general shift. I don't know. It depends on the individual. You know what I mean? That's a good barometer. That's a good barometer. So let's talk about uh, the new album, your fourth studio album, All Quiet on the Eastern Esplanade. Esplanade? Esplanade. I think Esplanade's got more rhymes to it. So we're using that, yeah, in Shiver. Yeah. Is it uh, um, Shiver on uh, the Esplanade? Shiver on the Esplanade. Esplanade, uh, which is with Shiver being one of the singles on it. Um, no, you're right. 5th of April, All Quiet on the Eastern Esplanade, out on, who are we signed to now? EMI, John. Out on EMI Records, available at all good record outlets, Our Price, uh, Woolworths. Woolworths, Ruff- all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all the lovely all the lovely old places we're dead proud of it we've uh had this burst of inspiration at some point this time last year and decided to to record a new record mostly new songs but there's some some lost treasures as well that uh they got washed up on the margate shores so we've uh, bundled it all up and yeah it's we're whacking it out it turns out that uh who's it is it not britney spears who's the other one She's releasing a record in the same week. Beyonce. Yeah, so Beyonce turns out to release in a record in the same week. We were hoping to have a number one, but um, if anyone is out there listening in need of um, their soul saving by rock and roll, get yourself the new Libertines album. Um, yeah, available you now. Get, you, get, you get the Beyonce one the following week. That's the key thing. Do that the following week. Yeah, all the stuff sounds the same, really. Like yeah. That. What? But you mentioned Margate. I want to ask you about this hotel. She's got a few good she has got a figure. My point is that, like, commercially, you know, I yeah. mean, she, she can batter us out of the park. But um, we, we're hopeful for this one. We think we just finally get the commercial recognition we so sorely deserve. <laughs> Tell me about, you mentioned our, Margate. Tell me about the hotel in Margate that you've been rebuilding. Yeah, no. So we are at 31 Eastern Esplanade. We've got the Albion Rooms. It's a hotel. We've got seven lovely rooms, reasonable rates. We've also got a small venue and bar downstairs and a recording studio. Um, we've got a little record label now called Strap Originals. So we're on the lookout for you know, exciting young talent to come and play the venue. And then there's a tax thing as well, where if you use your own bands to record in your own label at your own studio, the cycle of life continues and everyone's, everyone's happy. You know? And are you like like Basil Fawlty around the hotel, you know, like doing the breakfasts and whipping the hoover around? Not so much me. I'm not that hands-on. It's a car. On the other hand, my you know my my co-front man and dear friend Carlos Barat, he uh, he's he's a wizard. Not only an amazing guitar player, songwriter, he can mend a fridge, he can fry <laughs> eggs, and um, he's quite a good dancer and all this. So yeah. So you're more Sib- Sybil Fawlty in uh, this. You're just sort of what? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> No, no, he's an extra at one point. He plays the bit part. He plays the detective who cops off with uh, with Polly. He, um, he drives an MG. He's got a wicked, oh, leather, yeah. got a wicked leather jacket with uh, red trims, yeah. That's you. Okay, so <laughs> you come with a smile if you, eat, no, if you eat your vegetables or something like that, yeah. Did you hear, did you hear about the... Um, John Cleese was supposed to have written a follow-up to Faulty Towers. Did you hear anything about that in your uh, media liaisons? Yeah, it's it's been talked about a lot, but I haven't seen any evidence of it. I think it's been done, no? No, no. I don't think I don't think it's because he's he did a show on GB News for a bit, which hasn't. Yeah. No way. He, he just asked people, "Do you feel like you've been cancelled a lot?" That was basically what? the. Yeah. Come on, John. Man. I know. Come on, John. Um. Anyway, let's not talk about. We don't need to talk about John. We need to talk about you. Um. Pete he Doherty. <laughs> All Pete Doherty, all quiet on the Eastern Esplanade, is out right now. Full studio album. It's got some great singles on it. Run, run, run. Night of the Hunter. Shiver. And the new one, whose name I can't remember on the radio, but it sounds quite a lot like Oh Shit. Uh, Pete, lovely to speak to you. Thanks for telling us what you would do if you ruled the world. No bother.